I imagine that every person who has a story to tell will inevitably have some ideas that, while good, don't really fit into the narrative of the stories they tell. Sort of like AUs, side stories and what ifs. However, as a storyteller myself, I know that some of these side ideas grow to a point that you feel they also need to be told. That's why non-canon additions to a story are a good vehicle for telling these extra little bits. You just have to make sure that people are aware that they're not to be used as pieces to build the greater story you're telling. In the last few months, we in the FNAF-inspired VHS horror community have had at least two of these, The Mysterious House from Martin Walls and My Two Front Teeth from Battington. Both are holiday specials of their series, and both are stated to be explicitly non-canon to the central storyline. However, as we know from the first three Five Nights novels, that doesn't mean they can't include details that are canon to the main storyline. After all, the first place we found out about William Afton's name was in those books as well as the names of Henry and Charlie, who have yet to actually be named in the game's universe of Five Nights, although we theorise they appear. So, let's have a look at what the holiday specials show us and pick apart the parallels they have to the main storylines from each video series. Also, as my two front teeth video title warns of it, keep in mind that both of the original videos are kind of graphic and I will be showing the visuals if not including the sound. Also, I know these videos are not canon to the main storylines of each series, but I'll still be drawing the connection between them anyway for the fun of it. As a quick refresher on how I sometimes refer to parts of each of the Walls and Fards videos, a clip is an individual segment of the video, so Shark's Facility Tour would be the third clip of the second video, just in case you missed out with my first Walton and Fards video. We're going to start with The Mysterious House, mainly because it came out first and people have been asking me to cover it now for about two months by this point. Also, it's been a while since I talked about the series that started me making these analysis and theory videos in the first place. The first thing to know is this particular little Halloween special has its roots in a specific part of this series' history as a FNAF fan game. Welcome to Bond's Burgers had a Halloween event, which is where a lot of the alternative designs in this video came from. I don't think the Halloween event was canon to the game's lore though, which means it does make sense that the mysterious house is also non-canon to the Walton Files in general. Besides, the presentation of the video does make it seem more like a broadcast cartoon of some sort instead of being in the real world that the Walton Files story is set in. Also one of the two main characters in this cartoon, Tammy, is a character from the original game lore that wasn't carried over to the Walton Files, so there's another little factoid for you. The first thing I wish to note about The Mysterious House is that the title changed just slightly after it was first uploaded. Because I knew I'd eventually be covering it, I downloaded a copy of the video less than 24 hours after it first went live, and as you can see, the original title did not have the year of 1979 in it. I don't know if the year is relevant in any way, but it is the same year that the Little Bonds cartoon from the first video was made as well. The video starts with a screen from MW Animation Studios, which itself is a callback to previous works Martin has done. We get a bit of a white screen, then some black, before a pumpkin appears on screen and we see the title of the video, The Mysterious House. As I mentioned before, this entire video is like a holiday special episode of a show, kind of akin to things like Peanuts, It's the Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown. Given that above the title appears another one, Ducky and Tammy, it feels like The Mysterious House is the Halloween special episode for a cartoon named Ducky and Tammy. After a few seconds, we see MW Animation Studio 1979 appear at the bottom of the screen, doubly confirming the year this special was made. The title card continues on for another few seconds before the screen turns green and the title card flickers off screen in an almost projector-like fashion, as if the special was originally recorded onto film and is now being shown through standard video equipment on the television through a telesign machine. Some darkness follows with white noise in the background until the tape fades in on a scene of four houses surrounding a grass patch with jack-o'-lanterns placed around it. One of the houses included in this shot is the Brighton 27 house from Little Bond's neighbourhood, connecting it a little more to the second clip of the first video. The sky is dark and starlit, trees loom behind the houses and the moon peeks up from behind the roofs with two eyes. Interestingly, this entire scene resembles a stage play with all the houses looking fairly flat and an obvious line down the centre of the sky to show where the background bends, with each side being lit differently. Some piano music plays and our first character appears on screen, a duck, Ducky, wearing a bedsheet ghost costume that uses a checked sheet instead of the usual white one. They complain that Halloween this year has sucked because they've barely got any candy, and then their cat friend, Tammy, appears next to them. They themselves are wearing a bowler hat, bow tie, and waistcoat in yellow with what looks like a prop weapon stuck through their head, and suggests it might be down to the duck's costume because they didn't even try with it. 
Doki responds that at least they have a costume, and Taimi says that they don't like to dress up for Halloween. They eventually decide that there's still time, and they just need to find a good house to get candy from. Taimi is responding with, yeah, the night's not over yet, but she and the piano music are cut off just as she is speaking the last word, leaving only the white noises. Her sprite vanishing as she is cut off, and after a few seconds, the entire scene fades out. A few seconds later, a missing poster tacked onto a telephone pole seemingly in the vicinity of the neighbourhood we've just seen fades in. A photo of a brown bear in a pumpkin costume visible on it. It details that the bear, Johnny Bear, has not been seen since the Halloween of 1978, which if we assume that this special is taking place in 1979 would mean that he has been missing for a year at this point. Behind Johnny is the wallpaper of a house and a yellow figure off camera with one of their hands resting on the bear's pumpkin costume. The screen cuts to black again, showing only a brief muted green before fading in on the next scene. The next scene takes place next to a bus stop surrounded by pine-like trees and pumpkins. The piano music starts up again and we see Ducky and Tammy appear, having managed to get a lot of candy after all. Ducky suggests that it's getting late and they should go home, but Tammy replies that they've not yet been to some houses and suggests Ducky is scared. Ducky relents and suggests that they hit up a few more houses, then go home. Tammy then points at a house and the scene changes to show a house a little way off, with the piano again stopping for just background white noise. The house is number 32, with windows boarded up, crumbling outside mortar, and the area around it is dark and oppressive, with a discordant piece of audio playing just before the scene switches back to the bus stop. Overall, all signs point to this house not being one that should be approached. Ducky seems unsure about approaching, but says fine as long as it's the last house they visit that night. The scene fades out, and after a few more seconds of black, we see a scene of Tommy knocking on the door of the house, the two shout trick or treat, and then we see the door answered by Shah as witch sheep, who invites the two in for candy, referring to them as silly bunnies, just as the voice in Lucky You addresses Sophie as my little bunny. Witch Shah disappears from the door, and the scene cuts with a long pause of darkness before the scene fades in on the inside of the house. The scene seems to be a living room, with a number of pictures hung up on the walls. In them we see a dark figure that could be the Shadow Man, a picture of a pumpkin, one of a clown, one of a car with two red figures standing next to it which seems to be a nudge towards two of the images we've seen teased to do with Bunny Farm so far, and the last picture is a bit hard for me to make out but almost looks like a person half cut off in the image who might be crying. Ducky thinks the house looks neat, to which Shah thanks them and introduces us to her friends. We see Billy dressed up in a much more colourful fashion with some more detailed face paint, TVA, a somewhat robot-like character with jaws and colourful parts that seem to make him resemble a jester a little bit, and finally, the pumpkin rabbit, Bond's counterpart in this world. As he's introduced, the piano backing again stops and he lingers on screen a bit longer than the others, before he vanishes and the music and scene resumes, with Tammy saying it's a pleasure to meet them all, but they're really there for candy. Pumpkin Rabbit offers them the candy and TVA takes a photo which we then get to see. Pumpkin Rabbit tells them that it is their tradition to take a photo of their guests every year so that they don't forget them and invites the two to take a look. We then get a scroll over of past guests, each photo dated with a year starting from 1975. Just as the shot shows the 1978 photo, the music distorts and the screen goes black. If we look at the photo in question, we can see that it is the same one that we saw on the missing poster outside. Johnny Bear visited this house last year on the night he vanished, and what's more, this photo shows more of the scene around him so we can quite clearly tell that it's the pumpkin rabbit who is standing with him in the image. After a few seconds, the living room scene comes back and Ducky tells the people at the house that they need to go, but Charles seems disappointed and remarks that it's a bit dangerous for two kids to go outside in the dark. Pumpkin rabbit suggests that the two stay the night, and although both Ducky and Tammy are unsure, he convinces them that it will just be for one night, and eventually they agree. We then skip ahead to a later hour, the screen focused on a pink-purple rabbit clock that looks side to side with each tick. This clock obviously resembles Banny, the other rabbit of the showstoppers from Bond's Burgers. The scene moves back to show that the clock is in the room where Ducky and Tammy are sleeping in provided beds. Also on the wall are two more images, one of the pumpkin rabbits and one of a real life sheep. A relative of Shah's I expect. As we watch, Ducky gets up and leaves the room and the scene lingers for a little while before fading out. When he comes back, the sound of the ticking is replaced with an unsettling ambience at a low level as we hear Ducky's voice call, Tammy. Tammy too wakes up and finds Ducky gone as the voice continues to call, Tammy. The scene switches to outside the room and we can already see that the new photo of Ducky and Tammy has been hung on the wall next to that of Johnny Bears. Tammy opens the door and the unsettling ambient sound begins to get slightly louder as they look around for Ducky. 
We see Billy standing in the corner of the room in a pose that looks very much like the one of the animatronic Billy we see in the fourth clip of the second video, as Ashley finds him in the back doors. In fact, it does look a lot more like the animatronic Billy as opposed to the version we were introduced to much earlier in the video. At the same time, the ambient sound cuts out as we see him. Tommy notices him and tells Billy that he scared them and asks how long he's been there. Billy makes no reply or even indicates that he notices Tammy, but something is overlaid over the screen as we look at him. Something that seems to resemble something struggling, almost. Or maybe like smoke. Tammy asks where the rest are, and again Billy says and does nothing, so Tommy starts walking down the hall hesitantly to another door. Ducky's voice sounds again, Tammy. Tammy opens a door, leaving Billy where he is. She calls out, hello, and sees another door across the way, open. The camera zooms into the door as loud piano notes play before it quickly fades out and then back into a corridor lined with doors, which resembles the one Ashley found beyond the marked back doors door in the canine facility in the second video. Tammy calls out for Ducky, but gets no answer, so opens another door, finding nothing inside. I've explored what might be hidden in the shadows, but all I can make out is that the wallpaper pattern seems to continue on either side. Tammy moves on and opens another door, and this time we can see witch sheep looming nearby. Her hands red with something we can guess is blood, and her suit hold and stained red in places. Ahead in the room is the same photo of Tammy and Ducky taken before, but Ducky is now completely blanked out of the shot. Tammy moves on to a third door and opens it, and we can now see that the witch sheep is much closer than before. Looking into this door, Tammy sees Ducky reaching out for her and hears Ducky call again, Tammy. We then see that witch sheep is pretty much next to Tammy, who still hasn't noticed her as they are focused on their friend. The unsettling ambience plays again briefly as Tammy enters the room after her friend, finding themselves in a darkened room as we see witch sheep slide into view in the doorway behind them. As Tammy tells Ducky that this isn't funny, the door closes behind Tammy. We see an image of Ducky reaching out for Tammy, then some sad strong instrument chords play as we see Tammy gasping and holding her face in horror. We then cut to Ducky's mangled body, dressed in the bedsheet ghost costume they arrived in as loud peaking music plays over it. The song is Streets of Cairo, as we find out from the credits later. The scene cuts back to a disturbed Tammy as she turns to look around the room, tears in her eyes as more distorted and dead bodies propped up in chairs appear each one a previous visitor to the house, including Johnny Bear. Eventually, Tammy notices that Pumpkin Rabbit is also in the room, and the moment the view switches to him, the music stops. Pumpkin Rabbit asks what Tammy is doing in the room, and Tammy asks what he did. Pumpkin Rabbit only calls Tammy a naughty child for wandering about the house, and says that he will have to punish them for being so misbehaved, and uses Little Bunny as a term to refer to the child again. The camera closes in on him as he tilts his head and assures that Tammy need not worry, they won't feel a thing, and Tammy will get to be with them forever. He asks if they'd like that, and then reaches out for them. Street of Cairo begins to play again as Tammy tells Pumpkin Rabbit to get away from them. Then Pumpkin Rabbit reaches for his mask. The music stops again, and then seems to resume playing backwards as Pumpkin Rabbit removes his mask to reveal a distorted and broken face underneath that seems to be smiling, akin to the smile that the grey cartoon Jack Walton had in the second video. The screen goes black, before the shot shows the pumpkin rabbit, first with no face, then with the distorted face hidden under his mask as he lunges for the camera. The song plays a little bit under distorted skipping notes, and we hear Tammy ask what he's done before her speech also starts to skip and stutter. Then everything cuts to black and silence. Finally, we fade in on Tammy's head, dead, broken, bloodied and distorted as all the other visitors ended up, and over her face are placed the words, The End. Obviously, this story has its parallel in one particular clip from the Walton Files, that being the fourth clip of the second video. In both, we have a character staying over in a place that isn't their usual home, Ashley with K-9 and Tammy with the house, going off to investigate in the middle of the night, finding Billy, then discovering something past a set of doors in a long corridor they weren't supposed to, and finally meeting the end at Bond's hand, because they now know too much. However, the thing that interests me most and gets me to theorise about the next instalment of the Walton Files has nothing to do with the paralleled story, but instead this image from the living room set. Both the car and the two red figures are things we've seen in teasers for Bunny Farm, with the car first appearing in commercial and the two red figures appearing right at the end of footage. I'm aware that as of recording, footage is currently private. However, I don't feel that it changes the significance of the two red figures we see, and given that they're in the image with the car, something else that has been shown to be another piece Bunny Farm will give, 
I do wonder if this means the car and the red figures are going to be somehow connected in the main narrative. Now to the other holiday special video I wanted to cover, Bazzatoon's little Christmas special for Harmony and Horror, My Two Front Teeth, which came out the day I started to write the script. This one is similarly set up like a Christmas special episode of a cartoon show, instead of, you know, the Christmas special of a VHS horror series. Also in this cartoon, Sophia seems to be referred to as Sophie, but I'm going to refer to her as Sophia for the sake of consistency. This one received a bit of teasing, but mainly in the last few days before Bazzatoon posted it, he posted a day by day countdown that took the form of a calendar on a wall, and as the days went by it gradually got more and more decrepit, except for the final one which got a bit weird, anyway. The video starts with a logo for Batmation Studios which includes a cartoony version of the logo that Battington has used in varied forms on his own YouTube channel. This logo itself was already teased about a month prior with a small upload that showed the logo animation. We then get an old style title card for the video, Batmation Studios presents Mighty Front Teeth and the head of a cartoonish and very cute little Sophia fades onto the card. The card goes and the cartoon starts as the camera zooms into a house set along a road in a snowy forest area. Above looms a gigantic moon with a face which is honestly kind of the first creepy thing in this video. We then get to see a calendar on the wall, dated December 21st. The tape then shows a living room area, decorated for Christmas and with a familiar rabbit's head mounted above the fireplace. One of the pictures on the wall seems to depict Henry, Sophia and the baby doll together too, posed in a way that looks like any typical posed family photo of the children. The cartoon Sophia then appears on screen, seemingly dressed in an angel costume. She comments to Henry that it's cold outside, and a cartoon Henry appears too, dressed in warm winter clothing. After he says he's freezing, Sophia holds up a bundled up baby and says that maybe Henry too should bundle up like a Christmas present. The camera then zooms in on the baby as it giggles, and the scene then shifts to the children's parents, both bearing somewhat of a resemblance to the clown and the stretched faced ghost, which tells us that they are representing Martin and Gloria respectively. The mother tells the children that dinner is ready, and as the scene changes, Gloria stays on the screen for a second longer than her husband, her sprite behind Sophia before disappearing. The children say they are coming, but behind them in the window we can see a tall, thin horned figure just before the doorbell rings. Sophia answers the door, with the horned figure in the window showing a horrific face through the glass beside her, and finds her uncle Arthur stood there, come to visit for the holidays. Arthur himself looks like a much more palatable version of the horrific visage we saw in Through Broken Windows. He gives Sophia paper and a pencil to write her Christmas list to Santa, but the girl is unsure what to ask for until Arthur jokes about asking for a bigger mouth to be able to eat more of her mother's cooking. This then leads it into a rendition of the 1948 song All I Want For Christmas Is My Two Front Teeth which is accompanied by a visual of a Christmas list that shows the lyrics of the song with Sophia's smiling head bobbing back and forth at the bottom of the page. At some point during the instrumental, Sophia's head grows to take up the entire page and seems to get stuck in its animation, playing the same few frames over and over, resuming its back and forth only to get stuck again. It then shrinks back down and the lyrical part resumes, but before the end, Sophia's head fades out and shortly after, a terrifying demonic goat head is shown on the screen. As it twitches and the song distorts, we see red text appear on screen in the lower central part. I'm not even going to attempt to read it out as written, but for once I was able to decode it and this is what it says in English. Wear his skin, burn her, take his eyes, rip his arms, take her jaw, eat, eat, eat. After a few seconds, the image pixelates and the screen goes black and the audio stops. We then return to the cartoon as Sophia tells her dad that she's written her Christmas list and her father says he'll go put it out in the mailbox right away. The scene fades and we get a game-like animation of the father walking to the mailbox and putting the letter inside. There is a slight noise after this and as he walks off to the right of the screen the image suddenly glitches out and a face is visible in the background. After staring at it long enough for my eyes to go funny, it seems to resemble this version of the clown, one that is slightly different from the one we've seen a lot of in the main Harmony and Horror series. The video then cuts to live action footage of someone walking through the snowy woods in the dark until the torch falls on a horrifying face in the darkness. A face that strongly resembles the nightmare face seen on the horned figure at the window earlier. The screen goes black and then fades in on an 8 bit snowman, a red drippy mark around the base of its head. It then immediately cuts back to the cartoon, Sophia complaining to her mother that she ate too much as they stand in the hallway of the house. On the walls to the side of them hang a number of photos, including the one of Martin we see used often during the Harmony and Horror videos. Her mother tells her to go to bed, and we see Sophia sleeping in her room. 
On the wall is a purple version of the dragon drawing we've already seen a few times, and standing up on her dresser seems to be a figure version of the Stitch Buddy plush. As the scene fades, Sophia's sprite goes slightly transparent too, and we see the head of an empty-eyed puppet doll set against the door of the wardrobe. The scene then shows a still image of two lines of trees in the snow as discordant notes play. Then a figure fades in that resembles the mother, but slightly stretched out. It repeats in a high-pitched voice, Help me. Find me before the tree-lined scene vanishes behind her. Instead, we get a zoom in on what appears to be a face, the colours around it and the mother figure glitching between the red, blue and green of a CRT screen, and the audio of a screen plays. We then see the 8-bit snowman again, and a second one fades in alongside it, also with the same red, drippy mark below its head. We then see the calendar again. It is now December 22nd. We hear Arthur call Sophia, and we see her open the door and leave. She spies her mother down the hall, now stretched out and spooky. Sophia greets her, but the mother says nothing, and Sophia hesitantly says that she's going to see her Uncle Arthur. Arthur gives Sophia a gift that her father wanted her to have, but tells her not to open it until Christmas. The uncle then tells the children that they're going to make their father, who is unwell, some cookies. He then jokingly tells them to keep them away from him because he loves his sweets, just as the ice cream man is also said to like to eat his sweets. We then skip ahead to when they are done, and we get to see them being counted on screen. Five of the gingerbread men are fine and decorated, but the sixth one is shown to be burned and shriveled. Sophia asks what's wrong with it, and Arthur responds that it is imperfect, but the scene is cut into by the special title card backwards and somewhat colour inverted before the screen goes black again. We then see Sophia in the hallway with Arthur, saying that she is full from too many cookies, and Arthur tells her to get some rest. His voice during this line seems less upbeat than before somehow, and makes me wonder if something else is going on, as it had been when Arthur confronted Martin in the Harmony and Horror main storyline. We then get to see Sophia sleeping in her room again, this time with one of the wardrobe doors behind her opening as she sleeps. Then we see Arthur's head on screen, appearing as if on a CRT monitor, and with what seems to be a worried and sad expression on his face. He repeats, ho ho ho, as first his eyes go black, then blood runs down his face. Then, the image cuts to a more 3D, broken figure that seems to resemble Arthur, lights flashing as the song of the murder of the Lawson family plays out, peaking slightly. Just to his right, we see the nightmare face flash again, then see the snowman as a third one joins them with red below its head. The calendar appears again, and now it's December 23rd. The children are in the living room, talking about how they can't find their uncle anywhere. As Henry suggests they maybe go look for him, the scene goes black, then we get a few minutes of what seems to be surveillance footage of a pile of dolls sat in a storeroom. The footage cuts in and out, but we see some of the dolls moving and hear faintly in the background what might be people moving around and conversing. Eventually, from the middle of the dolls emerges a figure that looks as if it's either been skinned or badly burned all over, a crack on its head and eyes, empty holes and mouth gaping widely. As we watch, we hear the sound of someone running closer and closer and the footage cuts away. We then return to the car scene in the hallway, and hear Henry's name being called. Henry walks down the hallway, clearly nervous, and calls for his Uncle Arthur. The scene goes black, and then fades in on Henry as he's looking at something terrified. He asks, Dad? Mama? Before his figure becomes that of the Henry puppet. Mouth pulled downwards in a frown, and the eyes stretch wide in panic as circusy music plays. The snowmen appear, and a fourth joins their number. We see Sophia in her bed again, the wardrobe door still open behind her. However, this time, the door to the room opens too, and the stretched out, ghostly form of her mother enters the room and stands over the girl. The moment the door opens, the gentle nighttime music stops dead and only white noise can be heard. We see a few seconds of the very first scene outside, with giant moon looming, before the calendar appears to tell us that it is December 24th, Christmas Eve. We hear a baby crying, and as it echoes down the hallways, Sophia starts to search for her baby sister, Ava. She too is teary-eyed as she looks and we see an organ with a clown face as he starts to play music, and Sophia looks through the rooms hunting for the other members of her family frantically. We get a zoom in on other parts of the house we've seen, the stitch buddy figure on the dresser, the mounted rabbit's head above the mantel as the organ continues to play and Ava continues to cry. Eventually we see a door slam shut on the organ, and Sophia finds herself in the same room as Henry did yesterday. Her mother's stretched figure fades in from the darkness as the murder of the Lawson family plays again slightly, stopping as she becomes fully visible, and Sophia cries in horror that she's not her mama. The song resumes as the ghostly mother figure's face is zoomed in on, and realistic eyes appear in her empty eye sockets. 
Sophia pounds on the door in fear, turning to see the distorted figure of the father now present before the mother, his throat dripping red blood all down his front. The mother fades out as Sophia asks, Daddy? And the scene goes black before we see the Sophia marionette strapped down to a table, struggling and screaming. The image glitches out and then we get a somewhat realistic drawn depiction of Sophia's unique jaw configuration hanging open. The scene then shows the snowmen, now numbering five, in an art style that seems very Christmas card. The snow blows around them and black boxes hide their heads, although we can clearly see the red blood dripping down from them. The calendar returns one last time with blood splattered across it, December 25th, and as the credits play we see what was inside the gift that Sophia was supposed to open on Christmas morning, what appears to be the dead remains of Ava. I've noticed that while they're not exactly the same, it does resemble the head that Andrew and Mark has found in the bag during the events of Are You Happy? Obviously, this special pretty much parallels the entire backbone of the Harmony and Horror storyline up until this point, an entire family murdered. However, it doesn't that closely parallel it, as unless the entity was making them all into snowmen, I can't really say for what reason they were all killed. What does seem to be the case is that the horned figure we see early on is behind the killings, as we see its nightmare face appear a few times as victims die, which does parallel the devil's involvement in the actual Harmony and Horror story. The coded message after the song also seems to have lines that correspond to the characters and their fates. Take his eyes seems to refer to Arthur, as we see him losing his eyes during his death depiction in this special. Rip his arms refers to Henry, as we see during the main timeline of Harmony and Horror that one of the boasted features of the Henry puppets is that you can take them apart and put them back together again. And during the first few seconds of the Henry.mp4 video, we hear the child telling an adult that he just pulled off his arm, seemingly referring to the Henry puppet. Take her jaw is for Sophia, who as I mentioned earlier has a very unique jaw in comparison to all the others, one that is able to hang open and look almost torn off. However, after that I'd have to guess for the other two. Burn her may refer to Gloria, as this could explain why she never seemed to end up as a cursed flesh creature and was instead a grey ghost-like figure. Where his skin though? That might be for Martin, either wearing the clown as a costume, or maybe even because something was using Martin Greywind as a puppet this entire time. I also wonder if the final line of Eat 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 is a reference to how the puppeteer seems to be a combination of many different cursed flesh beings, I'm still wondering about that. The one thing I find most interesting though is that brief clip we get of the dolls in the storeroom. So far these dolls have not been seen anywhere else during the entire Harmony and Horror timeline, and while they might just be something made for this special, I do wonder if we'll be seeing them again during the second season of Harmony and Horror. There's also the theory going around that the order we see people die off in this special corresponds to the order they died in the main timeline, which I think does have some merit, but I'd like to examine a bit more first to be sure of that. Regardless, both of these non-canon specials have their interesting little links to their main storylines, and could possibly be giving us hints as to things to come. That's still all just speculation on my part though, only the creators really know what's to come.